Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu salamu ala rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam al-Azali's Jawah al-Quran, the jewels of the Quran. And we have reached Surah Sad. Um, he chose four verses, four jewels if you will. And these uh, uh, verses are, A'udhu billah sami alim al-shaytan al-rajim, Qul innama ana mundhir, wa ma min ilayin illa Allahu al-wahid al-qahar, رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما العزيز القفار قل هو نبأ عظيم أنتم عنه مرضون بعد هذه السورة when I look uh, because as uh, we have uh, discussed before uh, out of all the verses and the themes in the, uh, this particular chapter of the Quran there are many uh, notable uh, stories and uh, notions. Some of them are uh, uh, not exactly repetitions, but say, for example, if we say uh, that letter Saad, uh, that's uh, one type or you know uh, of the uh, of these independent letters at some uh, of um, of the chapters, the total of which is uh, fourteen. Uh, versus half of the Arabic uh, alphabet, as if, as if the uh, and it is the case, the challenge uh, to the non-believer, challenge to everyone uh, to come up with the with the, uh, something like the uh, the Quran. Here are the ingredients, letters. Uh, so that's one uh, way of looking at the. Uh, at the beginning of the surah, uh, there is repetition, in the, but it's not an identical uh, uh, repetition. Then, uh, the uh, as with all as with all uh, surahs that begin with uh, such a uh, with such a letter, there is mention of in general there is mention of the book of the Quran. And sad. Uh, Quran is the dhikr. This is an important uh, uh, issue. Uh, it is about the Quran. Uh, the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the eternal word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the dhikr, uh, the Quran is dhikr um, in the sense of if you recite it, uh, it's a form of dhikr, like the uh, when you use. Uh, the uh, when you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is dhikr uh, uh, but here uh, it could also be the dhikr in the sense of tadhkir a reminder and the next verse uh, verse number uh, two uh, the, uh, this is the truth yet the disbelievers are entrenched in arrogance and opposition entrenched of course it's in uh, it's not in the, uh, it is fee. They are in, in a state of arrogance. So you have to add one word or the other to explain what is this fee. Uh, their state uh, of being, their mentality, their psyche, their... So they are uh, arrogant. They are uh, um, in opposition. Um, the, op the arrogance is rejection of the uh, of revelation and opposition opposition to all the good things that the uh, revelation brings but first and for first most as we will see within a few verses it is about tawhid it's about the challenge to the non-believers it's a challenge about their idols their multiple idols sometimes imagine how many peoples we destroyed before them and they cried out when it was too late to escape. كَمَا أَهْلَكْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ فَنَادَ وَلَا تَحِينَ مَنَاصٍ وَعَجِبُوا أَنْ جَاءَهُمْ مُنْذِرٌ مِّنْهُمْ وَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا سَاحِرٌ كَذَّابٌ Now this is the, uh, in this particular uh, chapter, in this particular surah, that's the first attack on the, uh, the person of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So what do, you, what do they do, rather than addressing the issue, which is really Tawheed, the issue is 
here we have a revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like us to uh, correct to uh, reform to uh, change our way uh, of life rather than addressing the issue uh, now they attack the uh, the messenger they don't want to tend to the message those pagans um, idol worshippers uh, uh, they rejected this warner the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um it's one of them and this is uh it's one of them because every prophet was sent to his people with the using the same tongue the same language he knows them he they know him uh, and subhanallah uh, one can bring uh, some something from the uh, conversation between uh, hercules and the leaders of the uh, of the meccan uh, pagans at the time when they visited jerusalem abu sufyan uh, he was not a muslim at the time and uh, when uh, hercules asked him about uh, the traits of the prophet وسلم, and uh, uh, Abu Sufyan did not lie and he uh, praised the character of the Prophet um, Hercules found out that uh, the Prophet was uh, a moral person, moral, uh, ethical, doesn't lie and he reached that age of 40 uh, and Hercules uh, drew the conclusion he, that the Prophet وسلم, would not um, uh, have uh, uh, stayed away from lying uh, saying the truth for 40 years and then he would change and the accusation of the Prophet وسلم, here the accusation of being a magician uh, a liar a total liar and then they address the issue uh, at stake he has reduced all the gods to one god but the one god gods at least in english you can use small letters for gods the plural and capital uh, letter um when you use the uh, one god well uh, whether they have uh, even it's not really reducing uh, the the idols it's not reducing these small letter gods it's really uh, uh, dismissing the validity of all those idols and uh, simply they need to uh, accept and they need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you happen to have an idol in your house in your life uh, do think about why think if it's really a physical uh, idol that you uh, worship one way or the other uh, even if you think of it as a medium uh, simply channeling your uh, um, your uh, worship your prayer think again that this idol is uh, is man-made we talk about a statue that reminds you of someone that's man-made don't uh, don't really uh, nothing is like unto him nothing is like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then so um, an ad hominem attack on the prophet وسلم, attack on the person on the messenger tending to the issue which is really uh, their uh, idols their uh, gods if you will uh, were in, endangered and now they uh, pledge to uh, and they encourage each other to uh, persevere in their own wrong way um, and the way of paganism the chiefs among them went forth saying carry on and stand firm in devotion to your gods to their idols pagan idols certainly this is the this is just a scheme for power we have never heard of this in the previous faith this is nothing but a fabrication has the reminder been revealed only to him out of all of us مسامعنا بهذا في الملة الآخرة إن هذا إلا اختلاق أأنذر عليه الذكر من بيننا 
بل هم في شك من ذكري بل لما يذوق عذاب Has the remainder been revealed only to him out of all of us? In fact, they are only in doubt of my revealed reminder. In fact, they do so because they have not tasted my punishment. So the first part of this verse, has the remainder been revealed only to him out of all of us? So there is that kind of envy. There is envy. Uh, in their mentality, the uh, pagan Arabs at one point they negotiated with the with the uh, with the Prophet and they thought that it's uh, they can get a, a a good deal. Uh, they thought that they can have a win-win um, situation where their way of life could still be maintained somehow. Even they, uh, they thought that prophecy uh, is like presiding over, like, like a king, for example. They did not get it. So, they, of course, they did not taste the punishment yet. Or is it because they possess the, tre the treasuries of the mercy of your Lord, the Almighty, the giver of all bounties? أم عندهم أم عندهم خزائن رحمة ربك العزيز الوهاب أم لهم ملك السماوات الأرض ومن بينهم فليرتقوا في الأسباب Or is it because the kingdom of the heavens and the earth and everything in between belongs to them let them then climb their way to heaven if their claim is true had the uh, treasuries had the bounty, had the sustenance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, had it been in their hands, they would have deprived people based on their uh, faith and background. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for this and that, for the believer and the non-believer. Imam Ghazali mentions uh, a story attributed, it's about Sayyidina Ibrahim, Prophet Abraham uh, السلام, that uh, a Majin, uh, Majusi, passed by Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام. This is a story, it, it's not mentioned with any authentication but the message is clear in this story. So the man uh, uh, asked uh, Prophet uh, uh, Ibrahim السلام, to host him and the story says that Ibrahim, Ibrahim uh, insisted that he would become a Muslim first. Uh, the man went on his way. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, bringing to his attention that uh, this is not the way. Uh, hospitality is not conditioned on belief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been providing for this man for 70 years while he was, like he sustained him, rizq. He sustained him for 70 years. He became a man of 70 while he was still uh, an unbeliever. So Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, went after the man, found him and he took him back, took him as a guest. And the, uh, the Majin, the Majusi, Ask him what happened, why did you change your uh, position? And uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim Salam said that he told him about the revelation, and, um, and the Majin was uh, uh, touched by, uh, by the story. And he asked that, that uh, you know, his question was that God uh, treats me like this, and um, he uh, became a Muslim, a Muslim in the universal sense. The the, the story does use the Arab, the the Arab al Islam, Arab alayhi fa Islam. So they do not have the khazain uh, of the mercy of the, the treasury uh, of the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who provides for all. 
This is just another enemy, enemy force bound for defeat out there. Those who, the peoples, some of the peoples who lied, uh, rejected uh, the message before. The people of uh, Nuh salam denied the truth. The people of Noah, uh, the uh, Ad, and uh, the Pharaoh. Um, the Pharaoh is not a proper name. These they, they are, you have many uh, uh, Pharaohs who uh, uh, were leaders, uh, but also they, uh, as in the Quran states, they consider themselves as gods, and they have rejected the message. And uh, of course, that was of Sayyidina Musa salam. But here it says, "Wafraun dul autad." Dul um, Autad. It has been translated uh, as uh, Pharaoh of the mighty structures. Let's let's try to have um, a direct uh, translation of Autad, um, plural of Watad, and Watad is big. Like when you uh, erect a tent, you uh, fix it to the ground with these. Uh, Usually with these pegs, they could be used for, uh, for other purposes. And the shape of a peg is like that of the uh, pyramid. So it could be that here the reference is to the uh, pyramids. Wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'la wa'alam. Amongst those who rejected, of course, the Thamud, the uh, people of... Uh, uh, Sayyidina Lut salam, the purple plot. Uh, and the residents of the uh, forest, Ashab al Aika. And uh, these were all uh, enemy uh, forces. All of them rejected uh, the uh, messengers, each rejected their messengers. So, my punishment, the divine punishment was justified and uh, of course with the people of uh, with the people of uh, uh, Sayyidina Lut it was uh, um, homosexuality it was not about hospitality it's very clear the Quran is very very clear about it and uh, we see nowadays how uh, World religious leaders and different faiths are uh, giving in. They are, one way or the other, they are uh, accommodating uh, this uh, uh, sexual perversion, and uh, they uh, this would incur the wrath of uh, of God. These pagans, these pagans are awaiting nothing but a single blast that cannot be stopped. Now, uh, um, that cannot be uh, that cannot be stopped. So this sayha, um, we human beings can. Uh, tolerate a certain level of uh, of uh, of noise uh, some of it uh, they are safe uh, could be tolerated but some of it could be damaging uh, harmful and uh, it at one level it could kill sound could kill people uh, people do not understand uh, the power of uh, the power of uh, uh, of uh, of sound. So uh, when you uh, the uh, when about about two hundred uh, decibels, that might really cause the lungs to burst. On two hundred forty, two hundred fifty, it does kill. Uh, the head would explode. One can think about uh, the meaning now of this um, sayha, this uh, sound that, um, of course, 
no one could survive this uh, um, this sound, this sayha. They were um, so arrogant uh, to the degree that they uh, um, they mockingly uh, would say, uh, "Our Lord." Of course, they they do not really believe. Believing is also uh, modifying. It's it's a it's an affair of the heart. It's not uh, something that is um, that is only mentioned by the tongue. In, in this case here, they were uh, mocking or mockingly. Our Lord has sent for us our share of the punishment before the day of reckoning. Um, well, some people did receive that. And here written it, at this stage, the story of Sayyidina Dawud salam, Prophet David is introduced. Be patient, O Prophet, with what they say, meaning the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, be patient about what they say to you. Uh, and remember our servant, David, وَذْكُرْ عَبِدَنَا دَاوُدْ أَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُلُونَ أَصْبِرْ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم عَلَى مَا يَقُلُونَ All these personal attacks against you. And remember our servant David, the man of strength. Indeed, he constantly turned to Allah. Uh, a man of strength, of course. Um, but uh, of course, um, there, there are verses in the Quran that speak about uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala um, guiding Sayyidina Dawud to um, make um, a male just simply to um, for the for the war you dress that. Uh, the coat of mail at any rate. ذو الأيد ذو الأيد ذو ذو يد له يد. Okay. Uh, definitely we don't speak about the physical um, part of the body, the uh, hand. Here in Arabic, if we say uh, he, if we say in Arabic, he has a hand in in relationship to me. Uh, he has a hand over me. لَهُ يَدٌ عَلَيْهِ It's about generosity. I thought simply of introducing this uh, without belittling any, uh, you know, whether it's a translation or interpretation. Uh, I think in the in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he said uh, to his, uh, he said that the uh, uh, the daughter who uh, has uh, the longest, uh, the longest hand, but it means here, uh, uh, it means uh, generosity. Definitely, will be the first to uh, follow him after his death, and. Uh, this is really to his uh, wives. Um, the Prophet ﷺ said, hadith narrated by Aisha, she said, uh, he said, أسرع كنا لحوقا بي أطول كنا يدا. So the fastest to pass away after me is the one who has the longest hand and uh, the first level of understanding was for the Ummahat al Mu'minin is that the, uh, uh, after the, uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ passed away, they started uh, measuring their, uh, their hands. They did uh, this until Zainab bin Jahsh, uh, she passed away. And she was a short uh, woman. And definitely, if we talk about the physical, uh, the physical measurements, because they thought that it's about that kind of length, uh, definitely she was not the tallest uh, 
and definitely her hand, her arm and her hand were not the tallest. She, she said in the hadith, فَعَرَفْنَا حِنَا إِذِنْ أَنَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّمَا أَرَادَ بِطُولِ الْيَدِ الصَّدَقَةِ That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intended by طول اليد, the length of the, of, the, of the hand, of the arm, is charity. Like the hand is long with charity, reaching out with charity. Because Zainab, uh, she, uh, she used to uh, make, uh, make things um literally she used to um she was creative she used to uh uh dye skin she used to uh, make things uh, but she used to donate all that for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the meaning of so when we when we so dawood salam being having many hands it could be simply he was charitable you know left and right uh, but of course, strength is also there if that's really the issue. We truly subjected the mountains to him, our praises along with him in the evening and after sunrise. In the Jibal, so when Sayyidina would, uh, uh, you know, uh, recite when he uh, have a dhikr when he have when he has uh, he had a beautiful voice and uh, as if the universe was repeating or participating partaking uh, in the notion and in, in that kind of uh, of him and uh, in, in a different context from the quran so it's almost like uh, it's a, a command uh, that the mountains would uh, echo, uh, would uh, repeat uh, his uh, hymn, his dhikr, but also the the birds. And here it is also mentioned, and we subjected the birds flocking together, all ten to him, echoing, echoing his hymns. Uh, we strengthened his uh, kingship and gave him wisdom and sound judgment. I'm going to skip uh, uh, quite a few verses and just try to mention something about Sayyidina uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam, the son of uh, Prophet uh, Dawood, Prophet David. And we bless David and Solomon. We bless David with Solomon. Uh, what an excellent servant he was. Indeed, he constantly turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is one of the stories of Sayyidina uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam. Uh, remember when the well-trained swift horses were paraded before him in the evening? He then proclaimed, I am truly in love with these fine things. Out of remembrance for my Lord, until they went out of sight. Again. I am truly in love with these fine things out of remembrance for my Lord that uh, they they distracted him from having dhikr. And uh, here he omitted them. He ordered to bring them back to me. Then he began to rub down their legs and necks. I would, uh, this is of course uh, one way of translating, and I think this is the sound, the correct way. Uh, rubbing down their legs and necks, not as some uh, interpreters uh, said, that he started striking their, uh, their heels and their necks, and their necks in the sense of uh, killing them. Uh, that would defy. Um, quite um, a few uh, things uh, first of all um, they are um, they are living beings uh, umam amsalikum so the uh, one should not remember that sayyidina sulaiman salam changed the course of his army for the sake of a uh, for the sake of ants uh, so preserving the ants and killing the horses it doesn't make sense so uh, just think about this in terms of uh, a prophet a messenger 
uh, we are uh, we should we should have uh, consistency in our uh, behavior so the prophets would would definitely uh, not do that uh, and definitely it's a large number but it's the idea is he loved what he saw uh, and distracted him the second time he wanted to touch them while uh, my understanding is that at that moment he would praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hey, okay so very, I'm going to give a small example uh, you go to uh, uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgive me because this is a, a personal uh, story we used to go to the uh, uh, butterflies uh, park in Kuala Lumpur when I was uh, a professor at the International Islamic University they have birds uh, park and aviary a massive one they have uh, a, a park a garden for uh, orchids they have they have many beautiful things uh, but there was one for uh, for butterflies and my kids were uh, very uh, very young very uh, and uh, when i see a, a butterfly uh, i would say subhanallah so, so there's a difference i think this is really you see something you see something beautiful a sign um, uh, a sign ayah because um, every creature is a sign a flower uh, a fruit um, a human being, an animal, an insect, everything is an ayah. Also, uh, the inanimate objects, they are signs, but every time you see a sign, and if you if you could remember, you are not distracted, if you could remember to say, Subhanallah, Tabarakallah, Ahsan Khaliqin. And the kids picked up that. Uh, sometimes we see things and we uh, it does not ring bell because we are absent-minded. And maybe we are busy with some task or but we shouldn't uh, so this is really uh, very important to uh, to remember to uh, to do whatever you are doing and you are still uh, God conscientious that this would not distract you and remember the image here touching rubbing the necks of these horses and the and their legs that's exactly what uh, um, uh, jockeys uh, do before and after a race, a horse race, during the interviews, uh, it's, al it's almost like a second nature uh, to to them when they touch these uh, these horses. And it's, of course, they are. Uh, this is uh, of course good for both. Uh, literally, it's good for both you. Uh, it's a bond with these animals and nowadays they use these horses even in uh, in psychological uh, you know in, in therapy the uh, of course we would not end this particular uh, session without mentioning these four verses from surah sad there are other things that we can uh, talk about in this surah but imam ghazali chose again these four verses uh, قل إنما أنا منذر وما من إله إلا الله الواحد القهار رب السماوات الأرض وما بينهما العزيز الغفار قل هو نبأ عظيم أنتم عنه معرضون. Say to the disbelievers, of course, I'm only a warner. There is no god but God, the one, the most supreme, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and all that which is between the two, the Almighty, the most forgiving. Tell them this is a great announcement. From which you are turning away. This is the problem. You are turning away. Humanity is turning away. We are turning away. Different levels of turning away. Uh, we believe, and once it comes to uh, to worship, uh, we might do the minimum. Maybe the heart is not present there. Maybe you are tending to. Uh, consumerism and the material life more than anything else uh, we are required to go to uh, once in our lifetime to perform pilgrimage to Mecca but we made it incumbent upon ourselves to and I'm using uh, the uh, word pilgrim here in, a, uh, in parenthesis just simply to drive the idea um, 
we go to the mall maybe every week and we cannot basically uh, be on our own uh, for a few minutes uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to be entertained we need to be distracted we cannot face reality and that's a sad uh, state of, of affairs so these uh, alhamdulillah uh, beautiful uh, messages strong messages and also the uh, a serious reminder of course of uh, what awaits those who reject uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help us uh, and keep us uh, lead us guide us to the straight path and keep us on the uh, straight path uh, Jazakumullah khairan, subhanakallah wa hamdik, ashadu la ilaha, tasagfiruka wa atubu alaykum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.